Pencil! Hello everybody, E here. Welcome back to another book tag. Um, I was not tagged this time, but I was going to do a shout out video for A.G. McDonald. He runs a fantastic animated booktube channel, and he releases videos every single day. I'm not sure how that's possible. Um, I don't know if he has some special kind of software or what, but he has a fantastic channel, and I highly suggest you uh, go check his videos out, especially his one for this book tag. Uh, this book tag is the dilemmas of the dilemma of a book nerd. Is that right? I gotta go look in here. Let's see here. Um, but it was created by Lindsay's Little Library, and yes, it is the dilemmas of a book nerd tag. Um, I actually did my research this time, and I'm not just running around half cocked like John Wayne Bobbitt. But the number one uh, question is book storage. How do you store and organize your books? Um, I, this is literally why I had this office built. If you guys don't know, um, this office studio, whatever I call this thing, a uh, storage shed, was supposed to be a storage shed to begin with. Um, but I found such nice wood paneling for the walls and everything, and then I covered them up with bookshelves. <laughs> I decided to do... Uh, uh, early on, if you guys, will, I, I don't know, if, you, if you've been a long-time subscriber, I used to do videos like from the desk and whatnot. It looks so nice, the angles I could get and whatnot. I decided to start doing videos uh, because my co my friend Cody uh, Tidwell did a, a list of... I'm going off on a tangent, but let's just hang out and talk for a second. Um, he did a list of his top six favorite Stephen King covers, so I did a list of my top five uh, Stephen King books. That blew up. So, here's your channel. <laughs> Before that, I did little stupid things like, uh, did I, did, I, did, <laughs> I just made a noise for no reason. Um, before that, I did like the odd alcohol review. Um, and I also did some little, almost like Vine content. Uh, there's one of me riding a bike where I say hi -o silver away. Anyway, stuff like that. So, this, this office was supposed to be a storage shed. And off camera, over here against the wall where uh, my air conditioning and everything is, is just stacks and stacks of books. Um, if you have attended my book sales on Twitter, uh, you will have seen some of that in the background. I try not to take too many pictures of it because it's ugly. Um, I mean, it's just literally just stacks of books from the bottom all the way to the top. And I know that might sound beautiful, but it's they're not they're not books that are in good condition. So the spines are all creased and cracked and whatnot. But yeah, so I store books out here, um, and mainly books that I don't plan on reading because I sell books on the side too. Uh, so, yeah, I just got loads and loads of just books sitting over here. Bunch of James Patterson, Clive Cussler, Dan Brown, uh, let's see here, Jim Butcher, uh, let's see here. Uh, oh, M Nelson DeMille, even though I like Nelson DeMille a little bit. But that was question number one. <laughs> we gonna be here a while. Alright, dilemma number two, tracking. How do you keep track of what you have read and what books you own? Um, I... I just use Goodreads. I mean, it's kind of a boring answer, but um, at one point in time, I used to add stuff to Goodreads that I wanted to read, but now I only add stuff to Goodreads that I own in some way, shape, or form. Uh, you know, audiobook, uh, ebook, ARC, whatever. Um, so I don't, I don't keep track. It's, it's odd because I don't keep track of the books that I want. I, I literally, I only use that for that. So I went in and I wiped out my, my entire Goodreads. And now I only add books that I own, um, but I don't have all of the books that I own on there. So I still, to this day, do not track very well because of that. Um, so I will buy books two, three times. I have a book, uh, a, a, a video, I think it's the top five books I want to read or something like that, but I don't think I'll ever get to, uh, where I talk about I have five copies of The Secret History by Donna Tartt. I have three paperback copies and two hardcovers because I can't remember if I have it or not when I get out there. I don't have that problem anymore, but I did have that problem. So I don't even track my books very well now, so that question kind of doesn't, <laughs> doesn't work for me. Uh, dilemma number three, borrow. Do you lend your books out? Never. Um, I, uh, if I will give away a book before I lend it out. Um, it's, I feel the same way about money. Um, I don't lend people money. I just, I, you know, if, I, if I'm going to get, I, just, I don't want that drama of having to worry about whether or not they're going to give it back. Um, I'm super paranoid about stuff like that. 
Um, not because I'm worried about getting my stuff back, it's because I'm worried about it ruin ruining the relationship. Um, so many times in my life, great, I thought, great relationships were absolutely spoiled because of lending things and not getting them back or things accidentally getting destroyed and them no longer talking to me or responding to me because they think I'm harping on them to give it back or whatever. So I don't lend books, I give them away. Um, and if I can't give them away, I try to buy a copy for, for them. You know, if it's, if it's a good friend, I'll just go ahead and buy the copy because, you know, I want the author to do well. So, uh, let's see here. Uh, no, dilemma number four, buying. How do you buy or acquire your books? Uh, library sales, yard sales, um, thrift shops, and Amazon. I used to do half, uh, not half price, thrift books. I did thrift books three times. I was talking to J.B. Taylor about this, who I'm going to tag in this. Um, I was talking to him every single time that I ordered a book from thrift books, I got a damn advanced re reader copy. These aren't supposed to be resold. It says right on the cover that they're not for resale, but thrift books, Amazon's bad about this too, but you would think a company would see that whether or not either they won't buy, they shouldn't buy them, or if they're donated, they shouldn't be selling them. I mean, that's, anyways, but, uh, so I stay away from that. I, so every now and again, I'll go to aid books hunting uh, certain copies, but it's so, so hard to find books that are labeled properly online, so I tend to buy, I, I try to get stuff off eBay if I'm looking for a collectible, but aid books, every now and again, you will get lucky. Um, all the time, I see stuff listed over there as a first edition that is actually either a book club edition or, you know, a, like, uh, a, not, well, not second edition, but like a first edition, like 13th printing, especially with uh, Stephen King stuff, and people be will believe if it's a first edition, it's a first printing, and that's not the case. You know, you can have a first edition and it be on its 13 print, tr 13th print, and it be worth absolutely nothing, but people are still selling them for, like, you know, a huge markup because it's a first edition. Anyway, okay, uh, dilemma number five. Comments. How do you respond to the how do you read so much comment or similar comments? I don't really have anything else to do. I mean, that's that's it. Like, I read, I write, I hang out with my family. That's, that's my life. Um, I do this, I was talking about this on stream the other day, but I do this channel, the whole reason I started this channel was to start a community and have some kind of social hour kind of deal. Um, that's why I respond to comments, that's why I, I talk to people like I do in, in ch when I, I do the live streams, that's why I, I try to respond to most of the comments. I used to respond to them all, but nowadays I just don't have time. Um, <laughs> and the, I, I get, you know, hundreds of comments on, you know, my videos uh, across, you know, throughout the week. Uh, but uh, that I, I just, I, I don't leave the house. I don't do anything else. Uh, it, I'm disabled. I've had five back surgeries, so I don't travel much. I don't go out much. And I don't have any friends in real life other than uh, my best friend who lives about an hour and a half from me. And I can't get down and see him all that often because I can't ride in the car for that long. So I, t I literally tell people, I don't do anything else. I read, I write, and I hang out on YouTube, and I especially spend time with my family. Okay, next up. Uh, dilemma number six, next book. How do you pick your next read? Um, I'm constantly being asked to buddy read things with people, so uh, that's usually how I come across books. Um, well, not come across books, but that's usually why I start reading something. And somebody goes, hey, I haven't read that yet you want to read it together, and I'm like, hell yeah, either that or I'm reading for projects, so like Stephen King, Dean Koontz, that kind of thing, uh, for the channel. Before the channel, I mean, I was a, I, I still am a mood reader. I mean, um, I picked uh, The Goldfinch off the shelf, well, also, the movie's coming out, and I wanted to be able to read the book before I saw the movie. Um, I was interested, I've always been interested in that book. I'm loving it, by the way. Um, and so, I mean, I, I'm still a mood reader. Like, I'll just pick things, I'm, I'm, well, Helter Skelter, I was about to say Helter Skelter was one, but it's not, because I'm buddy reading that with Stephanie. They're great, by the way, uh, Wicked Junior Reads, you need to check them out. Um, and then, uh, uh, Milo Yiannopoulos is Dangerous, uh, I was just in the mood for that kind of, uh, that kind of, you know, non-fiction, so I jumped on that. So I'm a mood reader, I guess, mostly, but I also read for projects and education, and very, very seldomly would it be education, but, uh, Every now and again, I'll read something on, like, Einstein's theory of time or, you know, whatever, something like that. 
Uh, let's see here. When I'm feeling dumb, especially, I'm like, I gotta do something. And all of a sudden, I'm manic for, you know, I gotta have all the education. <laughs> Alright, so number seven, dilemma number seven, travel. How do you pick what books you bring on vacation with you? I don't go on vacation. And when I do go on vacation, I don't take a book with me because I, I, I'm going on vacation. So I want to get away from, you know, what I normally do. And I know, I know readers, you're like, oh my god, how can you not want a book on vacation? I understand. But me, I want to get away from normal life, so if I'm going to go do something like Disney World, I'm going to wear myself out at Disney World, and then I'm going to come back to the hotel and pass the fuck out. Uh, but, you know, it's per pretty much, that's, that's it. But I don't go on vacation because I can't handle the travel too much. Uh, I do staycations all the time, so basically, I mean, but I also have a very different life than, like, your average person because I don't go to a 9 to 5 job or any, I don't go to a, you know, the, I don't leave the house to go to a job. My job is, you know, writing and uh, content creation and book selling and all that stuff. So, um, I, I just, I, I don't vacation. So that, that, that's a, that's a, that's an interesting one. Um, I didn't actually read through these. I did watch, uh, A.G. McDonald's video. I didn't watch the original video. Shame on me. Bad E. But, uh, I did watch A.G. His, his answers. Like I said, go watch that video. Great. Great stuff. Cancel! Um, <laughs> I, I love that. You, you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to really look, well, not really look for it. It, it has the, it's in the intro, usually. Um, but, uh, he, that's kind of like his catchphrase. It, it makes me laugh every single time he says it. Alright, uh, dilemma number eight. Annotate. Do you write or highlight or mark up your books in any way? Oh, yes, Jesus. Um, I, I, I write all over a book. Um, but I don't plan on get, I only write in books I don't plan on getting rid of ever. Um, so, it, like my old Stephen King paperbacks that I, the, the, my readers' copies as they're called, um, I'll write all over the back of a book. I'll write in the margins. I write all over. I don't highlight because I don't own highlighters. I just don't see any purpose in buying them when I buy pens. Um, so I'll just underline things. I'll mark the page number. I will write out why I'm, why I'm, you know, marking that up in the back, that kind of thing, taking notes and whatnot. But yeah, I write all over a book. I know I got some of you triggered out there. I apologize, but you'll be okay. Um, let's see here. Number nine. Dilemma number nine. New or backlist? Which do you prefer? New releases or backlist books? I tend to veer toward backlist. Um, if you're a fan of the channel, you know this. Um, I do, however, review on NetGalley, so if something piques my interest that's new, like Wanderers by Chuck Wendig, I'm going to be getting to that this weekend. Um... If I can find my copy, I can't find it right now. I don't know what happened. Uh, it was in the house. Now I can't find it. Uh, so hopefully I get to it. Um, but <laughs> so it just kind of disappeared. I, I've never lost a book like that before. Um, I, except for like Watership Down, but that was packed away. Uh, but uh, m most of the time, it's it's backlist books. Uh, if it's Stephen King, my, my favorite authors, it's going to be their newest stuff. Uh, Caroline Kepnes, uh, Haruki Murakami, at least when the translations finally hit us, when the English translations hit us, then I finally, I buy it brand new. But, uh, I, I guess it's mostly backlist, I would say, um, because I'm, I'm always rereading books. Um, I have more fun rereading a book than I do reading it for the first time normally, because I catch so much more. It's like watching a movie, you know, over and over again, like the Sixth Sense kind of thing. You, you start seeing all the red, all the, you know, all the hints that the director gave to to us. I, I really enjoy that. I really like rereading, especially literary fiction that has theme, thematic elements, things like that. I really like that. Um, so last one, uh, dilemma number 10. I hope I didn't skip anything. Let me check real quick. Uh, da, 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 da. I think I got everything. Okay, so dilemma number 10, sequels. Do you read books as they are released or wait for an entire series to be published before reading book one? I I don't like sequels. Um, I don't like any... I don't even buy a book you, normally if I know it's part of a, of a series unless I can get the whole thing at one time or at least the first ten, you know, kind of kind of deal. Like with a, uh, uh, like a John Sanford, I plan on eventually getting to him. Everybody's telling me how great Lucas Davenport is. Um, some people say his other, like Virgil Flowers and a couple other ones are great. Uh, but that's... I don't normally, I, I never read something because it's a series, um, and if I do, I try to wait until it's over, unless it's something like really pop culture-ish that I really want to get into. Like, I tried Game of Thrones, um, didn't care too much for the first book, 
And then the second book, I actually think that the series was better, um, the HBO series. I know, all these controversial opinions. I'm sorry. You'll be okay. Um, but, I, I, like I said, I just try to stay away. I'm actually collecting Brandon Sanderson's uh, The Stormlight Archives, I guess is the series name, on audiobook. And I tend, uh, I, and not tend, I intend to binge them all as soon as he finishes all ten 1,200-page books. That is nuts. Um, I, I can't. I, I. I can't even fathom creating that much content. And on top, and I'm pr pretty damn prolific as a writer myself. But he's writing thousand-page books, more than one at a time every year. That's that's great. Well, I mean, he he's writing like other series on top of that. He wrote the Reckoner series, uh, Mistborn. I think someone said uh, he only does. He has someone else type him up for him, and he does all the. Uh, like, narration kind of deal on his walks. If that's true, let me know. If you're a Brandon Sanderson fan and you know the, the ins and outs, of, no, not the ins and outs, if you know the details of how he writes, let me know down there in the doobly-doo. I might be thinking of someone else. But, uh, okay, so I am going to tag, uh, I would love to hear uh, Stephanie at what, that's what she read. I would love to hear uh, what she has to say. Uh, I'm going to tag Wicked Junior Reads. Uh, they are a great channel. Please check them out. Um, I tagged them in the last video. I'm going to be putting a link to them down there because, you know, I'm, I'm tagging them. Um, and let's see here. Uh, Ryan's Beautiful World. I want him to do it. Uh, da, 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 who else? J.D. Taylor. I already mentioned him. Um, and one more. I like doing five. Y'all know top five. Uh, I like doing five, so... I will also tag Cammy's Corner. Let's do Cammy's Corner. All right. So I tag those five people. Uh, if you would like to do it, please feel free to do it. I certainly jumped into the tag. Nobody tagged me, so please do it if you want to do it. If you want to answer these questions down there in the doobly doo, do that too. But until next time, I have been E. You have been you. This has been another book tag video. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye bye.